What is up everybody? In this video we are taking a look at these, the brand new ASICS Nova Blast 2. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. How are we doing people? Let me know in the comments and also, what do you think of the look of the new Nova Blast 2? And did you have Nova Blast 1? Let me know how you got on with it and will you be purchasing version 2? I think this is one of the longest looking shoes out there. Let me know if you know of a shoe that looks longer than this. I think in this colorway, it looks like a, a boat. What do you think, have I finally lost the plot? Right, so in this video, we're gonna have a bit of a catch up on the Nova Blast 2, find out what it's like, have they sorted out some of the uh, stability issues, uh, what updates they've made, uh, are they better, are they worse, is it still a very good daily train, all that kind of stuff. So let's get stuck in. Right, so here it is, Nova Blast 2. Now the Nova Blast was a huge hit last year, and even this year because it got reduced um, quite nicely, so it made it an appealing um, shoe, I think in terms of a price point. It had a lot of fans out there. It was a very versatile shoe in terms of daily training, which is great. Um, you had the uh, very bouncy, let's call it bouncy, flight foam blast uh, midsole that was introduced on the shoe. And for some people it was too unstable, for some people it worked really, really well and they absolutely loved it. Um, for number two, they've chewed it up a little bit, they've made some changes and we're gonna go through them in a minute. Um, but I'd be very interested to know, if you've already got a pair of the version two, how you're finding it versus version one, I'm gonna let you know how I feel about it in a sec, but let's do the stats and features first and the changes and all that kind of bits and bobs. Okay, so changes versus version one. Well, they've made it wider. Um, they've increased in terms of the stack in the forefoot. They've decreased the drop, so it's gone from 10 to eight, which I think does make a difference. Um, still got the flight foam blast in it, but it's not as um, soft, I would say. Uh, we've got a double skinned uh, jacquard mesh upper. I'll come on to that in a minute. We've got gasseted tongue. Uh, the lacing system seems to have been updated mildly. We've got a hard rubber on the outside. So see, that's definitely wider, the shoe. This part here, I don't know what it's called, I can't remember, has definitely been reduced in terms of sticking out. Before it was quite bulbous, um, the way it stuck out and you could feel it underfoot, but that's definitely been sculpted back down, which makes a lot of sense. In terms of fit, this is a UK nine and a half and it fits true to size to a degree. I would check your sizing on this, people. Uh, just a word of warning. It does come up a little bit longer than you're expecting. Let me know, like I said, about whether you know a longer shoe than this. But I, a nine for me is too small. So just play around, maybe order both the sizes online and see which one you prefer. In terms of weight, um, this is about 10 and a half ounces in my UK nine and a half. I'll just double check in grams. Uh, 297 grams, so yeah, 10.5 ounces for argument's sake, which is okay for a daily trainer. I wouldn't say it's the best um, in the world. We've got some comfort around the heel, which is kind of nice, um, which is perfect for daily training. You've got a pull tab on the back, not that, that makes any difference. And they've added some structure, I would say, uh, additional structure to the heel versus the other version. Um, it's more noticeable, I would say, um, to try and correct some of that stability issues. Uh, a hard rubber, I think I mentioned. And that is probably about that. Oh, price, 130 pounds. Forgot the price, people. Um, so, okay, where do we start? Firstly, I've got some problems with the quality. Look, is it me on, on your shoes? Let me know. I can see a lot of glue around here and it's just been like sprayed on like this. Have a look. Let me know if yours are the same. I actually think this is probably the worst ASICS pair of shoes I've had in terms of quality, the glue just looks like it's been thrown on by a three-year-old and it's a bit reminiscent to some of the Nike shoes. It's not very good, I have to say. And I think even like, I mean, it must be hard to cut this element here, but it just looks a bit rubbish. I'm not that impressed with the quality, to be honest with you. 130 pound shoe, 
Mm. I, and I expect better from ASICs in terms of build quality. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not saying it's not going to last or anything like that, but it's just noticeable the amount of glue that they've chucked around it. I just think it's a bit poor in terms of build quality even there. In terms of build quality, I've already started shredding it up there. That's, mm, I don't know if you might see that. But I've always started shredding it up there. It just shows you how bad my pronation is. Um, yeah, so overall, I'm not that impressed in terms of quality. Um, I think the upper is quite warm. It's not as warm as a Pegasus 38, but it's definitely warmer than I was expecting. Um, and it's not really got up to proper like high temperatures here in the UK at the moment. Most of the time it's just wet. When this shoe is wet, it gets really heavy, people. So just bear that in mind if you're wearing this in the rain. I know most shoes do get heavy, but this feels really heavy if you get it wet. Sorry, I just sneezed. But yeah, so if it gets wet, it just seems heavier than most other shoes. I don't know whether, it, I think it's probably the, the upper. So, uh, so in terms of feel, uh, it's definitely an improvement over version one. I would say that, 100%. And I complained for myself because of the way I run that version one was too unstable for me. I was really collapsing. And the tune-up they made in the Flight Phone Blast has definitely improved it. For me, um, the sort of added, not added, but the redesigned heel area, heel counter, has definitely improved it for me. Um, it feels less unstable, mainly just a little bit wobbly now, probably the way I would describe it. And it's, it's a shoe that I can cope with in terms of wobbliness. Um, yeah, so the overall feel of it is less unstable, more wobbly. That's probably the better way to describe it. But here's the thing, I just feel like there's a lot in the heel. I mean, a lot in the heel. And it just feels like for me that I'm pushing down this way, right, and out a little bit. Now, I just, I don't know, it just there's, feels like when running, there's a lot of bulk under my heel. Now, that's probably because I am mid to heel striking, okay, because I'm using this on daily runs and that kind of stuff. Um, I have picked up the pace in this. I've done a, a few um, speedier sort of work, um, work workouts, <laughs> if I could speak. Um, and it's great, you know, once you get on the toes and, you know, the flight phone blast of the toes, great. But there is a lot of bulk in the heel, people, and it is noticeable. It feels like a bit like you're on high heels. Um, not that I spend much time in high heels. Let me know in the comments if you do. Um, but I don't know. It just, th there's a lot here and it is noticeable for me uh, versus some of the other shoes. Now, again, I do like a, a firmer ride. I like a, um, a less stack. I like a, be a little bit lower to the ground and that kind of thing in terms of ground contact. So that was really noticeable for me, how much it built up in the hill. And it just feels like I'm getting pushed down um, this way, that's uh, the right way on the camera, yeah, that way. But here's the thing, I really did enjoy the shoe. Uh, and although I've moaned about it and, and complained about it um, for the last well, however long this video is, overall, actually, this is an enjoyable shoe. I can see why people still love Nova Blast 1. I like the updates they've done to it. It's made it accessible to me as a, as a wobbly runner. And yeah. I think as a daily trainer, it's a great option. Is it the best daily train of 2021? No. I think at 130 pounds, it's expensive. I think they're taking, you know, the Mickey to a degree with the way they've made it. I think if this shoe again comes down to 100 pounds or less, it's a really, really, really good option. Um, so maybe just hang on for it and wait till it gets reduced because it is a great daily trainer. There's no doubt about that. The Flight Phone Blast will give you good feedback. If you like a softer ride, you're going to enjoy it. It is softer than a Clifton 8. It's probably a little bit more fun than a Clifton 8. It's definitely not as much fun as a Rebel 2. I would still tell you to buy the Rebel 2 over this. I'd still tell you to buy the Hoka Mac 4 over this. And I'd still tell you to buy the Puma DV8. Um, what's it called? Vi uh, Velocity. DV8 Velocity. Nitro Velocity. That's what it's called. Um, which you can get really cheap at the moment. Um, I would pick those shoes over this every day. But... Like I said, they have made really good improvements on the shoe. I think they've still got some way to go to make it the shoe that it can be. Um, but if you digged version one, you're going to really love this. If you struggled a little bit with version one, then try out version two. I think you'll get on with it. But just be aware, it is kind of warm. Don't get it wet. And uh, yeah, be prepared to have like a really, 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 really long shoe on your foot.